Let's, uh, let's wrap up today with news and photography. And I know Brian O'Neill Hughes, who I'll invite out in a moment, he always tries to convince me not to have him follow Jason, but this is the natural order of things. So, um, <laughs> photography. The broad popularity of smartphones equipped with high resolution cameras and the explosion of social media come together to make, to make photography centralized, to put photography on center stage in all of our lives. But while we, have all of, we all have our camera with us at all times, in our pocket or in our purse, the same can't be said for all of our photos. All too frequently, our best photographs, including our most recent edits, get stranded on the islands that are our desktops, our smartphones, and our iPads. Others have tried to solve this problem simply by storing the files in the cloud. But access to our files is only part of the solution. We also need access to all of our recent edits. We need a non-destructive workflow that lets us experiment and explore with the tools, and, and tools that are powerful enough for professionals, and yet at the same time don't limit our creativity. This is the cloud-native photography service that we are building with Lightroom. It's a service that spans mobile, desktop, and web, and it revolves around three core tenets. First, cloud-native. It's not just that your photographs are stored in the cloud, but your edits are too, and they are available to you anywhere, anytime. Next, non-destructive workflows. Whether you're working on the desktop, working on your phone or your iPad, your edits can always be reverted, so you have the freedom to experiment and explore like never before. And finally, the focus on experience, a modern user experience that puts the most common tasks front and center, yet reveals much more power when you need it. Lightroom and Photoshop have long been the gold standard in your photography workflow. And today, we are excited to share with you a glimpse of the future of photography from Adobe. To take us through that, I'd like to invite Brian O'Neill Hughes, who's already standing next to me on stage here. Take it away, Brian. Brian. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone. Uh, you know, last year, I followed Jason Levine, and for very obvious reasons, I asked if I could please not do that again. It's an impossible act to follow. And they said, yeah, no problem. Uh, this year, you're going to follow the most iconic animated character of your lifetime. <laughs> Got it. So either this is a really elaborate practical joke, or they believe that I have something interesting to show you. Um, I certainly believe I do. So let's jump right in with photography. I want to start with Lightroom Mobile. And Lightroom Mobile is an incredible app. It gives me access to all of my photos, access to all of my edits with Lightroom Power. I'm running it here on the iPhone 7. This is a fantastic camera for taking pictures. In fact, using Lightroom Mobile, I can capture true raw DNG files with my phone. I'm loving using it for that. What's great about it is that those raw captures live alongside my desktop raw files and any images I might have brought in with my iPad. And so that's what I did with this image here. I used the camera connection kit to bring this into my iPad Pro, and it's just sitting right here. Now, I have tremendous power here. There's all sorts of things I can do. But one of my favorite features in here is Auto Tone. I'm going to just touch Auto Tone. I touch one button. And look what happened to that image. I'm going to undo that so you can see how it looked when I started. This is the flat files that came off the camera. I touch Auto Tone. And what's happening is we're analyzing the histogram and we're comparing it to histograms of professional photographers for this great adaptive result. So I'm going to come in here, add a little bit of clarity. And let's go ahead and make this black and white. And as I zoom in here, I'm going to just touch for before, really dark and muddy, and after. That's the sort of thing you can only do with a raw file, and I just did that on my phone. Oh, thank you. OK, so I love, I love the phone. It's, it gives me access everywhere. I love the camera. I use it constantly. But when it comes to editing, I like to use my iPad Pro. I've got this enormous, beautiful screen. It's a great way to work. So I'm going to come over here, and we're just going to go ahead and launch Lightroom Mobile here. And what I'll notice as I come in here is that I have access to all of those same files. They're right here waiting for me, and I can continue uh, right where I started there. And as I mentioned before, I can bring in photos using the Camera Connection Kit right into here. I can ingest raw files, and I can edit raw files. And I can tell you, photographers have been wanting to do this forever. Six months ago, that wasn't possible. So let me show you how this works. I mentioned before that I have some desktop raw files. This is a file that I spent about 20 minutes on the desktop editing. And 
I can replicate all these edits here, but the easiest way to take advantage of this is simply to touch and hold, copy those settings, and then we're going to move back here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab another image from that same day, uh, this one of the Ferrari here. Haven't edited this at all. I'm going to paste those settings in here, and immediately they copy right over. And what's great about this is it's natively non-destructive, right? I can change any of this after the fact. I can change the crop. I can come in here. I can change it back to color. And I've done all of that really, really quickly. Now, if I double click here and zoom in, we can even see the expression on the driver's face. We have a tremendous amount of information here because it's an uncompressed raw file. Now, I find that headlight a little bit distracting, so I'm going to come in and adjust the colors here. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. I have that full desktop power. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the luminance control, and I'm just going to touch on that and pull that down. I don't have to guess what color that is. I'm just touching on it and pulling it down. I'm going to do the same thing with saturation. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I mean, this is a great example of something that's just as powerful as the desktop, but I think even easier to do. Thank you. I'm going to do the same thing with the saturation, adjusting just that one portion. So let's come back there and look at that before and after. Really dramatic difference. You can see how we copied over those settings and really took it far. Now, what if you don't have a desktop file to leverage? OK, I realize not all of you have that. Let's look at an image exactly as it came off the camera. Again, this is another one off of the Leica Q. It's a DNG file. Uh, obviously, I'm a car guy. I like the composition. I love the car, but it's flat. And I'm sure you guys have encountered this before. There's a difference between what you shot and what you saw. And I think of editing as that bridge between them. So as I come in to edit this file, again, I'm going to hit Auto Tone. And it's going to dramatically change this image. It's going to look a lot better right away. I'm going to pull in my highlights. But what I'm missing here is the drama in the sky. And for that, I love to use dehaze. OK? Dehaze, I just pull the slider to the right there, and I cut through all of that atmospheric haze. It's kind of like a digital polarizer. The only problem with this image, if you notice, I'm darkening the foreground a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a local adjustment. Now, this is something I haven't been able to do here until just recently, and it's fantastic. Not only do I have the desktop power, but I've got this really nice touch environment where I can just drop a gradient right there. I can select dehaze, go ahead and pull that over, and now I've applied dehaze to just the top of that image. Thank you. There it is before and after. No singing, no sound effects. We don't need any of that here. <laughs> not, not even going to try. Not even going to try. Not even going to try. Um, <laughs> last thing I'm going to do with this image is I'm going to crop it. Let's just pull it on the sides here, get rid of some of those distracting elements, and commit that. And remember, as with everything we do here, it's natively non-destructive. I can change this at any time I like. OK. so. That's what I do when I remove distracting elements from the side of the image. Uh, but what if I don't have uh, my distracting elements conveniently located on the edge of my frame? Well, that's OK, because I've got Photoshop Fix. And Photoshop Fix is a fantastic way to use powerful retouching tools from Photoshop CC right here on the iPad. Forget about that weird looking guy on the side for just a second. Let's open this image here. And this is a great example of what I can do in Fix. We've recently rewritten Fix using uh, Apple's Metal Framework. And this gives us the ability to open these enormous files and to use powerful retouching tools that you guys have used on the desktop before. So I can do stuff like come in here and just remove people from this beach really easily. I could come over here and get rid of this boat in the foreground there. No problem. What's neat about this is it's a hybrid tool. It's not just a cloning tool. I could define a region here, like so. And I could come in here and switch it to a patch tool. right? So I've got this hybrid tool in one. It's, it's really easy and powerful. When I'm done with this, I can go ahead and save that back to Lightroom, save it back to the cloud. And it'll be available to me across applications. OK, so let's move on to this guy. Um, you know, Adobe is full of a lot of really brilliant people, a lot of really interesting people. And I've been proud to work at Adobe for 17 years now. Uh, a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different philosophies on things. I found, though, last year and this year, that when it's suggested that we show retouching, um, especially when it comes to a face, there, there is no better file to, to do that with. There's nothing that needs more work than this particular individual. 
Uh, no, one, no pushback whatsoever anywhere in the company. Uh, so let me show you what we're doing here. Last year, we showed you how you could auto-segment the face and you could liquefy it. Um, what I want to show you now is what we're doing around skin smoothing. And the team has done an amazing job here. The way that it works is that you can just come in here and drag your finger over this to smooth the skin, something I could obviously use uh, quite a bit of. But I'm going to undo that because there's a faster and easier way to do this. And this is a great example of what you heard about earlier with Sensei. This is a great example of this machine learning. I can just touch face, and it's going to analyze the face and smooth it. I'm going to go ahead and touch that again, something I obviously need. I kind of think of that as the Benjamin Button button, and it looks much better right away. I'm going to go ahead and look at that before. <laughs> Let's not look at that for too long. And after. And the way that we're doing this is happy Halloween. We're building a mask right there on the face, and we're careful to avoid the hair, the eyes, uh, the teeth. They just do a fan fantastic job with that. Um, really, really, really neat. OK, so when we started, right before I came out, Brian was talking about how we're building this ph photography service for the future, right? And it's important that it be cloud native, non-destructive, with a focus on experience. Well, we've done that for mobile. Everything that I just showed you could be done on your phone. And it's available on both iOS and Android today. Even the stuff in Fix, it's available on Android today. But what about the desktop? Those advantages on mobile are not unique to mobile. In fact, one of the core benefits of this service is that we're able to get to our edits and our images anywhere. So I'm really excited to share with you guys what we're doing over here on the desktop. We talked about this a little bit earlier uh, with graphic design and how we're rethink rethinking that. And today, I'm so thrilled to announce Project Nimbus. Now, this is a sneak peek of something that we're working on. And I want to give you guys a, a look at how it works. Um, as soon as I come in here, we notice that we have complete consistency, right? There's no jarring transition between mobile and desktop. It just looks familiar. Things are right here. I can get to my images right away. And they're right here before me. Now, I have a lot more images on the desktop uh, than I have. I can see a lot more images. If I want to find a particular image or edit a particular image, I can do that really quickly. Let's say I want to find the shot of the pier that we took earlier. Any images that I shot of a pier will come up right away. Any edits that I want to make here, Let's go ahead and make this one color this time. I'm going ahead, and I'm going to do a couple things I can only do uh, with a raw file. right? So I can search for my images based on the content of the image, and I can adjust them with all that same power. And of course, because these are all connected across devices, because they're all cloud-based, I can get back to those wherever I am. So, after doing this, if I want to, say, step back and move to another device, if I want to go back to my uh, Lightroom Mobile, I can do that, and I'm going to see those same edits on my other device. So let's go ahead and move back over to Lightroom Mobile. And I'm going to go ahead and launch here. And there's my image in color right there, just as I left it in Nimbus. They're all in the cloud. They're all synchronized. Maybe I want to make a change here. Let's say we want to put that on Instagram. I'm going to crop that square. Those changes will then be reflected across other devices, anywhere I might be. And so now I'm going to come back to my desktop, and I want to do something a little different. And this is something you guys can do today that you almost certainly don't know about. Really, really cool. You can go to the web, and you can go to lightroom.adobe.com. If you don't remember that URL, you can just log into adobe.com, and you'll see a little tab for LR Photos. And what's wonderful is you have that same search technology here. And search here, content-based search, is another great example of Sensei. This really smart, powerful search. You don't have to keyword anything. You don't have to tag anything. You just find the images you're looking for. So that works great right here. A couple of other things to know about Lightroom Web. You can share your files. You can integrate directly with Adobe Portfolio. And you can even edit them here. All right, you get the idea. You can access your files wherever you are. OK, I want to go back to Nimbus, and I want to talk about the experience with editing. I'm just going to show you a couple of editing features here, because it's a really friendly place to edit. So I know that one of the images that I'm looking for has a windmill in it. So I'm just going to type in windmill. I meant what I said before, you guys. 15 years on the Photoshop team, you'd think I would keyword my images. Never did it. I was terrible about it. So if you're not doing that, don't feel bad. 
I'm going to come in here to my healing tool, and I want to show you how we're handling healing and retouching here. I'm just going to go ahead and paint over the region that I want to retouch. And what I can do is I can just grab any area that I want it to copy in there, match that up. It looks great. Let's go ahead and choose a larger brush here, paint over that. And what's really nice is it gives me a visual representation of where it's pulling from. I can choose any part I like. Remember, everything I do here is natively non-destructive. I can undo that later. I can undo it anywhere I might be. Now, the next thing I want to show you guys, last, last edit I want to show you here is with lens correction. And for that, I'm going to show you an image from the hallway. So I just type in hallway. <laughs> Those of you who are Adobe employees might notice that this particular demo asset uh, really reinforces the fact that I don't get out much. I don't leave the building often. Um, I don't normally recommend using the GoPro for architectural photography, uh, as I obviously have here. But lens correction is really, really easy in here. And here's how it works. I just check Enable Lens Correction. Let's look at that before, GoPro, and after. If you guys are shooting with a GoPro or using that, you can come in here and just toggle that on, and it straightens it out right away. OK, now, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with my inner ear here. It's tilting a little bit to the side. Um, it's a wide-angle lens. It's really easy to do that. Uh, there's two ways to fix this. One is automatic, and it just works. The other way is guided. And I love guided because I can just draw these lines here. I can choose the vertical parts of the image, and it's going to stand this up straight. I'm going to grab a horizontal part of the image to level it. But what's great about this is you can break the rules. You can change the perspective. So what I like to do with this one is choose the wrong line, choose a diagonal line, and I completely change my perspective here. All right? So you can do imaginative things, things that are different. If I want to come in here and constrain the crop later, it's going to train it right to that. And again, remember, all of this is available to me across devices. It's all cloud native. So what I'd like to do is finish up where I started, uh, go back to my phone. Let's go ahead and just launch Lightroom Mobile there. And what's really important to remember here is that everything I do in one place is available to me in other places. That's a modern, cloud-native, non-destructive experience from raw capture to pro-grade editing anywhere. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. So as you can see, we're building on the success of Lightroom to deliver a complete cloud-native photography service that is available across desktop, web, and mobile for full resolution raw editing and sharing. From Lightroom Mobile to Fix and Mix to Lightroom Web and the new project Nimbus on the desktop, you have access to all of your full resolution photographs and any edits anytime, anywhere, on any device. And you can only get this from Adobe. No one else offers a cloud-native photography service with the power of Adobe Lightroom at its core. And the Project Nimbus beta will be available next year.